Hey guys, it's Miss Smith, and today I'm going to be showing you not only marking the text, but also charting the text. And it's it's kind of like marking the text. There's a step. I've already made a video on that, so please check that video out. But it's basically like marking the text, to just adding a few other components to it, and it's usually de dedicated for longer assignments. So let's go ahead and dive into it. So this is the assignment that I'm going to be demoing, the NGSS Biology PLC course information and syllabus. Um, again, this if you are using a different assignment, don't worry. This is just the demo assignment for this video. Again, marking and charting will apply to any of the any assignments you do, regardless of just this assignment. All right. So let's go ahead and dive into it. So the same. Uh, oh, before I go ahead and dive into it, we want to make sure that we make a copy of this assignment for ourselves. So I'm going to go to File, Make a Copy, and I want to make sure that I put it in my NGSS Biology folder, and I want to put this assignment in Instructional Segment 0. Again, your syllabus for your, depending on which, uh, which school you're at, depending on how they're having you organize information, this is just for the site that we, that I am at. So we're going to just go ahead and move our information into those folders. Okay. Once you've done that, which I've already done, I've already made a copy and all that. And notice how I changed my, changed part of the title to my name. Right, just to stress that this is my assignment and no one else's. I'm gonna go ahead and mark and chart the text. Again, before I do anything, anything, I wanna go ahead and read the information. So notice how this assignment explicitly says to read. Now, some assignments won't just outright tell you. It's just um routine. It's just expected for you to read assignments. Now, I stress this in the other video, so I'm, and again, I'm going to stress this here. In reality, you're supposed to be reading assignments or reading any sort of reading material article. You should read it at least three times. And how do you do that? Well, the first time you read it, you just read it without touching it. You're reading it on its own. The second time you go back to read it is when you are marking the text. And then Third time you read it is to help you answer questions, chart the text, um, find evidence for claim evidence reasoning or answering analysis questions. Okay? So, again, actuality, what you should be to retain information is reading it five, three times. Okay, let's just, now that I've said that, <laughs> let's go ahead and get into it. Okay? So, I'm going to do this demonstration as if we have already read the entire syllabus. Okay? So, the next thing we need to do is number the paragraphs. Because this assignment is particularly long, right, we, we need to make sure that we number those paragraphs or those chunks, okay? So what you want to do is you want to go in front, make sure that you have the blinking line. You're going to go ahead and change that font to 18. You want it to be in bold, and it already is, and put the number of that paragraph, and boom, done. This is chunk number two. So again, font 18. It's in bold. This is number two. And you're just going to do that for the rest of the chunks slash paragraphs. And I'm just going to go ahead and do that. All right, so in total, this assignment has 12 chunks or paragraphs. 
Okay. For this video, I'm not going to be doing the whole assignment, the whole reading. I'm just going to be demoing the first paragraph, so paragraph one, chunk number one, etc. Now, before we get into the actual paragraph, I want to talk about number three and number four real quickly. When you go back to read for the second time to actually mark the text, what you're going to do is you can go ahead and highlight and underline at the same time. So. Let's go ahead and let me go ahead and show you, excuse me, what I mean by that. So for number three, we're going to highlight key terms. So what you want to do is you want to highlight it, whatever it is that word is. You're going to go up here where it says highlight color, and that's going to give you the highlighter tool. And we're going to highlight those key terms in green. For underlining important phrases, definitions, etc., again, we want to highlight with our mouse. We're going to go up here to the underline tool. It's the letter U. And we're going to go ahead and click it and boom, it'll underline it for us. So we want to do number three and four together when we go back and read for the second time. Okay, again, I'm only demoing, demonstrating, marking the text for paragraph one. I am not going to do the entire assignment. So here we go. All right, biology is a rigorous college preparatory course. So biology important college preparatory course that highlights the science of living things and notice how this important information is already underlined for me but living things seems to be like a key term so I'm going to highlight that as well this course emphasizes phenomena based critical thinking for this NJSS biology course, I'm just going to highlight it for you, phenomena. So each instructional segment is going to use phenomena as the forefront for that instructional segment. And you'll know what I'm talking about as we go further into NJSS biology. So I'm going to highlight phenomena. Okay, so phenomena-based critical thinking approach to biology and its major principles. That seems important. The course essential outcomes are aligned to the Next Generation Science Standards, also known as NJSS Biology. Again, this information is already underlined, and I'm also going to highlight it because the name of this course is NJSS Biology. Where the course topics include biodiversity, ecology and interacting systems, the chemistry of life and cell energy, cell structure and function, genetics and heredity, DNA and molecular biology, functioning organisms, and biological evolution. In this course, students will analyze relationships between structure and function, in living cells. So I'm going to underline that. I'm also going to highlight functions and structure because that's the second time I've now seen those words. So I'm just going to go ahead and highlight them. Analyze relationships. That's a skill, so that seems important. Derive the relationship between single cell and multi cell. I've seen that word cell again, so I'm going to highlight it cells. Analyze the flow of energy and matter within ecosystems. Again, I'm seeing the word analyze again, so that seems like an important word, so I'm going to highlight that analyze. Assess the interdependence of organisms. Organisms is another word that I keep saying, so I'm going to highlight that word as well. And understand increasing complexity of natural systems. I'm going to underline that. Students will analyze and interpret uh, inquiry-based investigative activities and deepen their understanding of scientific principles and scientific thinking. That seems important. Other skills that students will acqu acquire include the ability to think independently, think collaboratively, and assess and analyze critical thinking problems. So I see that word assess again. 
That seems important. And I also see uh, thinking, the word thinking. Let's highlight that as well. And GSS Biology is a college preparatory course. That seems important. I'm also going to underline that as well. Not only are they key terms, but also underlining. And is designed to meet one of the A through G requirements of the University of California. So that is very important, especially when it comes to transcripts and things like that. And note, UC standards require at least a grade of C or higher, and that's very important. It's in bold, so I'm going to underline that. All right. Now, did I underline the entire paragraph? No. Did I underline entire sentences? No, with the exception for the last sentence. Okay? So what we don't want to see is this whole thing underlined. We want to see parts that are important underlined. Now, I know this was a lot of information, right? But as you go through the rest of the information, it should be a lot easier to figure out what to underline. And there is no right or wrong way to underline or highlight this information, okay? It should be at what you, what you are interpreting the information as important or what should be important. Now, if you are underlining two things in the entire paragraph, especially a big paragraph like this, you might want to recheck yourself, okay? Again, just use your best judgment when you are highlighting key terms and underlining important information, okay? Don't, don't do it. Don't do it lazily. Don't speed through it, right? Make sure you do it with, with, with purpose, okay? Because this is your work. This is part of your thinking process. So show me your thinking process. If I see the whole thing underlined, or if I see one or two things underlined or highlighted, and that's it, that's all you show me, that tells me you didn't really put much thought into it, okay? So please keep that in mind. All right, so we've done number three and four. Now what we want to do is write a summary sentence for each of the chunks. Again, I'm only demonstrating for paragraph one. I'm not going to be doing it for the rest of the assignment. Now, we want to make sure anything that we write, that we put into our own words that is required of us to answer, to type, we want to put that in the color blue. So first thing what we want to do is we want to go ahead and make sure our answer is in blue. So you're going to go to this A right here where it says text color and change it to blue. We also, for summary sentences, what I would like you to do as well, I want you to highlight your summary sentences in yellow. All right, so let's go ahead and do number five. So for this assignment, it has been written for you, at least part of it, right? Where to write your summary sentences. Sometimes it's there, sometimes it's not. Again, it just depends on the assignment. So again, I'm going to go ahead and text color, and I'm going to change it to blue. Here we go. The information above is saying that, well, how do I know, how do I summarize? This is a lot of information that I've highlighted or underlined. Um, again, use your best judgment. Make sure that your summary sentence is hitting what the paragraph is talking about. So let's see what I highlighted. So I under, uh, highlighted biology, structure, function, analyze, living things, etc. Do I need to use every single highlighted word or every single underlined information? No, because then you'll just be rewriting the paragraph and that's not what we want. We want you to just summarize what you got from this paragraph. So the information above is saying that biology is a college prep uh, class, oops, not class, course, where we will be analyzing and thinking about uh, structure, structure and function, cells, organisms, etc. Through um, through phenomena. 
based learning. Notice how my sentence, I all I did was take parts. I took parts that were important, parts of what I considered important from that paragraph, okay? Did I take a sentence and rewrite it as my own? No, that's cheating, that's plagiarizing it. Plagiarizing, that's not what I want. What I want you to do, what we want you to do as the teachers is we want you to take the information and put it into your own words. That's most, any assignment that you do. Any assignment, regardless if it's this class or not, any class that requires you to write your own thoughts, write your own answer. We don't want you to take it, take it from here. Your summary sentences need to be in your own words is basically what I'm getting at. Okay. And again, I want to go ahead and highlight this in yellow just to emphasize that that is my summary sentence. All right. Number six, write a question in the question boxes. Okay, so how do I do that? Some of the assignments will have a question box for you. So what you need to do is click it. Once you click it, you're going to click here, the edit button. So click edit, and then it will take you to here. So how do I, how do I type in it? You're going to double click, and then you should be able to type into it. So for questions on the left, you want to make sure your questions are about the paragraph. Can it be a question you already know the answer to? Absolutely. If you're unsure, if you're unsure on how to start writing questions, then absolutely go ahead and write questions you know the answer to about the paragraph. So you could say your question could be what is your question can be what does NGSS mean? And I can find that answer in that paragraph. Okay, so if you're not comfortable or if you haven't really practiced writing questions for inquiry thinking, then just start writing questions you already know the answer to. What we'd like you to do and what we would like you to build up to is being able to ask questions that you don't know the answer to and maybe questions your teacher doesn't know the answer to. So your question could be, right? Your question could be, is what is the difference between single cell and multi cell? Okay, that could be a question you may not know the answer to at this point, but you will, right? Maybe your teacher knows the answer to that question. Again, we want you to be able to work your way to ask questions that you don't know the answer to. And why is it that we want you to do that? Because science is all about piquing our curiosity, always asking questions, and furthering our knowledge on things that we would, we would like to know. All right. So I'm going to go ahead. Again, you don't have to write two. I'm just demonstrating two. So let's say that you just want to have what does NGSS mean. That's totally fine. Once you are done writing your question, you're going to click save and close, and boom, it'll be there for you. Again, we always want our answers to be in blue. Number seven is answering questions, and usually those questions will be either with the summary sentence or most of the time it will be at the end of the reading of the article and you're just answering those questions. It could be regular questions about the worksheet or reading. It could be analysis questions, conclusion questions, claim evidence reasoning. Again, it just depends on the assignment. All right, so I'm not going to answer these questions because that's your job to answer those questions. Okay, all right. So we have just completed marking and charting the text. So again, it looks very similar to marking the text, just and, um, adding a few more components to it. All right. I hope this video has been helpful to you, and I will see you guys in the next one later.